Hey everybody, David Henry here from LearnStageLighting.com and in this video we're going to dive back into our tutorial on light key. So if you haven't checked out the first video, do so right here and you'll begin patching, set up your device, uh, your preview, and be ready to go with the rest of this tutorial. Now, as I've mentioned before, quick couple bits of business. If you don't have light key yet, haven't downloaded the demo, don't own it, check it out below. That's my special link to help you get Light Key, and it also gives me a small commission if you buy, but at no additional cost to you. Number two, if you want to supercharge your Light Key programming and get faster and have more playback options than ever before, check out my guide to using MIDI in Light Key. I think it's one of the most powerful features in this console, and in their official videos, they don't talk about it a lot, and they don't cover it to the depth that I'd like to see. So you can grab that free guide here, I don't want you to miss out on that. Awesome. Now let's dive in to controlling our lights, programming, and doing effects in a light key. All right. So where we left off, we were finishing out the tutorial, the wizard that's built into light key here. And once you finish that, once you step through, you can give color to conventional lights if you've got those. It walks you through it real good. But most people I know uh, these days, especially if you're buying a lot of new stuff, you're probably not using a lot of conventional lights with gel. At, at this point, it's 2019. Those are quickly going the way of the dodo, and they will be gone soon. So once you've got your preview set up, you click through the wizard you're brought here. You can see your stage, and in the newer versions of Light Key, starting with 3.0, it automatically scales to different screen sizes. So there's no zooming in or out because you can see everything. It does it automatically, and you should be good to go. Let's talk about some programming basics, okay? So the basics of programming in light key work like this. You select your lights either by clicking on them, assigning a MIDI control, which my bonus video on using MIDI with light key will walk you through this and so much more. I'll have a card to it on YouTube here so you don't miss out on it. Or you can use the shortcut keys, such as if I type B, I get all of my bars, for example, but if I type B2, I get only bar B2. Pretty simple, pretty cool. So you select your lights, you give them parameters, which you can do in this design tab, or for pan and tilt, you can press shift P to bring up the pan tilt dialog. And then you save those parameters to presets here on the side, which you then build together in the live tab as different cues or the control panel as they're called in light key. This is also where you can build effects both in the presets and in the live tab. So to get started, let's just build a simple cue that brings everything at full. So I hit Apple A there, which of course on Macs is generally the keyboard shortcut for select everything. Now we can go ahead, we can bring our dimmer up at full. Now. The quick way to do this is here at the bottom, you can grab it here. I know there's also touch bar shortcuts for those Macs that have touch bars, or you can see keyboard shortcuts here on the right. We can see here that Shift D would highlight our dimmer, which we can then go ahead, I'm actually just putting my scroll wheel of my mouse over top of it, or I can click and drag. This brings everything to full, so I wanna save this now. So the first step is to build a preset palette. So I'm now gonna right click and press new preset, or I could press Apple N. I can call this everything at full. And then I can go ahead and I can drag that into my live tab, which then creates a new live button for everything at full. So light key at its simplest point is really that simple. It's literally just dragging things together, building the lighting looks that you want and then once you've done that, you can press done here on the live tab and you can turn your buttons on and off to turn things on and off. But it can be more complex than that and it can do, like you can do much more complex things than this. And I'll mention also the link to uh, get like key is below. And if you do buy through my link, uh, I will get a commission from it, which is great because it's at no additional cost to you. It's just part of the way that like key does marketing is they allow us to share the link with you to talk about it and get a commission for it. So, you know, no pressure there. If you download it through my link, just know um, I may get a commission and um, 
the U.S. government requires me to uh, disclose that, which is good for you, good for me, because, you know, we all need to understand everybody's interest. So if I right click on this button, I can also go here to control type and I can make it a fader or a button. The faders can be horizontal or vertical. And as you can see, we give full freedom for complete size. And now if I've turned it into a fader, I now get control on that fader of the intensity comes up and down as I work with my lights. Awesome. So now that we work and understand the basics, let's get a little more complex. So I mentioned a few things here in passing because we've only assigned intensity so far. Um, the first is the presets. What I like to do in my presets and inside my light key training inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs, I go into more detail about this, is I like to create a lot of groups. And I like to create a group for each type of light, okay? So for example, we could do PARs, and I would actually go, if I was making, um, I would make a group for every type of light, so my PARs, my Bs, my MHs, and my MBs, I would make a group for each of those. I usually name them right after the short name, whatever I name them here in light key, so that it's consistent everywhere and easy to find. And then I build together my building blocks. So. For this at full pre button that we did on the live tab, I would actually go in instead of doing an everything at full preset, I would go in and create a pars at full, an MH, a B, an MB, and a P um, all at full, and then bring all of those into this fader on the live tab. Because when you're creating, when you're in this edit mode and you're building things on the live tab, you can bring these up, go to show properties, um, or rather get info, and then you can drag in as many different presets as you want to build this queue. What you can't do, however, is you can't have a preset like this that's everything at full and only drag this preset onto the queue for, say, the bars. You can't go, okay, I want to select these bars, apply the at full preset, and then pull that onto this button. You can't do that. A lot of other lighting consoles work that way, but light key does not. And so if you program this like you would another lighting console, if you've done that before, then you're just going to be frustrated because that's not how light key works. So go ahead, you know, build yourself groups for each type of light. Build yourself folders, which are called groups um, here in light key. And then in those folders, I like to separate out all of my presets by intensity, by focus, by color, and beam, which as we notice, say we select a moving light here and go to the design tab, that's the way that they basically uh, keep things separated here in light key because it's the attributes of light that we work with. So you can change the dimmer, change the color, the position, or the shutter strobe and zoom, um, and those I usually classify together as beam. And so Working with any other parameter in light key, just to give you a quick overview again, this is a quick tutorial. Um, I go a lot deeper in the labs and uh, I recommend checking that out and getting the free bonus here that I've got for you um, because there's a lot of information there that I, I can't cover here in the time that I have. But um, with color, you know, we can go ahead. The cool thing, one of the cool things about light key that I want to show you is say I go in here, I get a color and I get a position, I go shift P and I get my position. What I can do with this is I can then go, if I made it with these lights and I like how it looks, I can go ahead and copy properties. I can go to all and then copy them to a different type of light. I can paste them. And so what light key then does, and this is really powerful, is it literally, as you saw on my visualizer and on my light key screen here, it literally copies things from light to light, whether they're the same type of parameter or not. You may have noticed that what they do is they add a really great abstraction layer, which I like about light key a lot. And what that means is that with these moving heads, I, for example, pointed them to a specific area on stage, a specific kind of pan and tilt value, a specific direction. And then I went ahead and set them to red, but they're an RGB color mixing moving light. And then I copied that to a light that has a color wheel. It doesn't mix color. It has color flags in it. I'm um, not flags, color wheels with swatches on it, but it matched up the red to the color that I had, I had chosen here. So it's really powerful what it does. 
and the fact that when you're building things, especially you know building your presets, or maybe you build a queue from directly from parameters here instead of through the preset, which sometimes you might do that, but I like to go through the presets because then you can update them, you can edit them and edit them, and then update them. Uh, once you change it, you can update them there, save it, and it'll update your queues. But you can build queues in the live tab totally from uh, the the different parameters that you've selected. And so it, it's really powerful. I don't want to um, underestimate that enough with the things that you can do. And I know when I first looked at Lightkey, I kind of looked past some of this stuff and I didn't pay as much attention to it as I probably should have. And so um, that is kind of the basics of getting things set up, of laying out some some basic buttons. Um, you can lay out maybe some button, like everything at full, maybe some buttons for some colors, et cetera, et cetera. But then when it comes down to it, we want to talk about effects and playback. And so what I want to do here just quickly and easily is show you how like he makes effects and then um, remember to check out my guide on using MIDI with Lightkey because it's going to show you how to save time and save frustration with Lightkey uh, when you're building your show because MIDI controllers, just an inexpensive one even, can help you to save time in programming and in playback and to do more than you thought was possible in Lightkey. So check out my guide here. Now let's talk about effects. So say I grab, say I hit M, which will select all of my moving lights because I have MHs and MBs. Let's go ahead and build an effect. So I'm gonna right click here, and then I'm gonna go ahead to the design tab. I'm going to go to color and say add color effect. Now I get a variety of effects that are pre-built. So you can start, of course, it's only gonna work on my mixing moving heads and that's fine. Um, you can go ahead, purple rain, yeah. You can go ahead and you can add any of these effects in. And what's cool about them is that you can see here, I'm firing through different effects. Some of them look good on these lights. Some of them don't look this good, good on these lights. I can go through all my different effects here and I can also adjust my effect once I decide what I want. So say I grab this purple rain, purple rain, and now I'm able to go in here and modify it. So say I wanted a third step. And maybe just like a blue, and maybe we go white in the middle. And then we'll go ahead, and we're gonna slow it way down, way, way, way down. And so what we can then do is start to work with, that didn't do what I wanted, that's okay. Um, we can work with these parameters and we can work with the length and distance to, to really begin slowing things down to really begin getting what we want out of it. You can see there now distance of one length of six, that, that's starting to get what I want. Um, and then we can go ahead with any effect and we can go ahead and create a new preset with it. And we can also, of course, bring that into our live tab as well and save that. Um, as you'll notice in Lightkey when you're working with effects, and this is just the basics, when you first record it and bring it into the live tab, the effect is actually enabled. And so you'll need to turn it off before you go to build your next effect. Let's do that. We can go ahead and build another effect. So this time, why don't we grab our bars and we're gonna go to color and we're gonna go, actually, let's do the moving, the MBs because then I can show you if I shift P for position, we can show you a position effect. There's also fanning available. We'll go over that quick, actually. There's a lot to cover here. And, you know, this is a YouTube video and I try to keep them short and digestible. Um, but there's a lot more on this inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs. So what you can do with the fanning is you can literally go in and select one light at a time and then adjust their pan and their tilt in reference to each other, and then it will figure out the lights in between manually. This isn't really a great example, but it gives you the idea. Actually, let's fan these ones. That was a bad example, guys. So, um, so what I do here is just literally go position, 
add fanning. And now we can see how this really works is if I position the first light and position the last light, it's going to go ahead and spread the lights in the middle directly in between those two. Now let's go on to a position effect now that I got distracted for a minute. And so what I can do here is shift P. Woohoo, we're happy with what it looks like. And we can go ahead to position. Let me clear this out since we got the fanning dialog up and it's literally taking the whole screen. I just right clicked and cleared. And so what we could do is we could go to position and add an effect. Now position effects look a little different because they use two attributes, pan and tilt. So I can select one here and then there's two types. There's the blue type and the wave type. Now the blue type, when you add them, they allow you to work in the 3D space with the pan and the tilt and you can modify the points that they use. It's actually really cool. And it's really powerful, especially if you need to keep your lights off a screen or off of a, anything else on stage that you wouldn't want to light if you're blinding people, keep it out of the audience's eyes, etc. Really powerful. But if I go back, if I right click here in a clear, and I go back here to a position effect, we also have the, um, the wave type. So if I go, say, to this Ballyhoo and press Add, we're now using what most lighting consoles use for position effects. And that's literally where we're just saying, okay, here we've got pan and tilt. And we're able to modify off of the base point, wherever they're sitting currently, wherever that light is, the amount that it goes over positive and negative from that base point, okay? So if the light's sitting, you know, pointed straight down, this says, okay, how far forward and how far backward, how far left, how far right off of that straight down do we go? Now, the cool thing about this is that these are relative. So if we apply this to a light that's pointed up in the air, it will move off that point in the air instead of off of straight down. Um, there's a lot we can do here, like changing the different um, shapes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that's all I really have time for kind of here in this tutorial. So I'm going to save that again, a new button. Boom. It's got a position effect. Sure, that's what we'll call it. Done. And then we can turn it on and off. And so we can see here in this brief overview that Light Key really is a powerful console. And it's one that as a software, I have been uh, mentioning and been recommending more and more. Now, check out my full Light Key review here because Light Key is not the perfect software for everyone. In fact, I have another video. Well, let's link to it here. That is five reasons why you shouldn't choose Light Key. But if you're a Mac person, especially if you're new to lighting, you really might want to check out Light Key because it can do a lot, especially if you dive in and, and learn how to use it and learn some of the features it has, you'll be able to really speed up your programming and be able to create some interesting stuff fast. So with that, guys, check out those other videos I mentioned. And uh, also, they're in a playlist too here on YouTube. And also check out my light key MIDI guide. It will save you time. It will save you frustration and get you programming your lights in the light key faster. Awesome. And then I will see you guys in our next video here on Learn Stage Lighting. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys soon. Thanks so much.